Hello and welcome to the first ever, hopefully, but I doubt it, Draw My Friendship. This is the story of me and my best friend of 13 years, Amanda. Amanda and I met September 14th, 2004 in a small little private elementary school in a small little town of Elmwood Park here in New Jersey that nobody knows about. The funny thing is, my mom and her mom actually worked together before we were even born. So they knew each other, but we had no idea we would ever meet. They didn't even know they were sending their kids to the same school. My mom says that she still remembers it so clearly that as soon as the dismissal bell rang, we walked out arm in arm, already latched onto each other like, like it was kind of meant to be. But I'm pretty sure that I claimed her, and she claims that she claimed me, so I don't know, what's the story? You can imagine the look of surprise on both of our mom's faces when they recognized each other after both of their kids coming up to them and going, Hi, this is my new friend of mine. Hi, this is my new friend of Nicole, whatever. And they're like, uh, excuse me, I know this girl. We work together. I'm pretty sure they don't sound like that, but I mean, it would be funny if they sounded like that. Amanda and I did almost everything together. We grew up together, from summer camp to being together on field trips, from me spending snow days at her house playing Wii Sports and realizing how horrible I am on sports, from me taking dance classes with her that I, you know, liked, I guess, to taking skating lessons with each other. That was really fun. But another thing we shared was our love for cute little lambs, and Amanda had this stuffed lamb named Lammy. She would take it everywhere and it would be so cute, but then I found a lamb too, and I named mine, <clears throat> uh, you know, Lammy. <laughs> I remember those days in summer camp where we'd pass the time by buying these real pokeballs and role-playing with our two other guy friends who acted as Ash and Brock while we were Misty and Dawn, and we were loyal to those Pokemon personas. Um, now when I say that we shared everything together, we actually did share this one unfortunate instance where we both liked the same boy, but we won't talk too much about that because he actually turned out to be the worst. Amanda and I would talk non-stop when we were together, so when we learned the concept of calling on our house phones, our parents would never hear the end of it. I remember my mom asking me, don't you get tired of talking, you know? But you know, anyways, <laughs> we both got our first cell phones at the age of around 11 or 12, and we would constantly text each other updates on how we saw each other's crush pull into the parking lot of McDonald's. I remember that she upgraded her phone to this cool like horizontal flip phone and I was so jealous. She even had this game on her phone where she could take care of little virtual cats and she named one Misty and we're both 100% sure that cat is dead now. As we grew up, we still loved playing Pokemon, Pearl, Platinum, Diamond on our DS's and scamming the little boys at our summer camp to trade us their good Pokemon. Like we would tell them, oh, we're gonna give you like an Arceus if you give me your Apom. And really, I just traded over my level one Bidoof and that was the funniest thing and we both thought it was bullying, but you know, <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do, right? <laughs> I mean, like As we both started to get a little older, we both started to really get into music. On bus rides home from school trips, I remember listening to the Pokemon theme song together and remembering the, all the words. Well, that wasn't really like the epitome of the music we listened to, but like uh, we'd even listen to, uh, I remember, Jesse McCartney's Leavin' on her small pink phone. <laughs> you could hear the pixelated, uh, you could hear pixels. You can't even really hear pixels, but you could hear them in this phone. Oh, uh, we loved him. This is gonna sound so corny to say, but I believe that Amanda and I are soulmates. In some way, shape, or form, there is definitely something, anything that is tying me to Amanda. During the eighth grade, I guess you could say I had my first experience with, um, you know, liking someone who actually liked me back. So, uh, but it was very puppy lovish, you know, you know, you know, inside joke, hi, yo. <laughs> uh, we, uh, it's, it's an inside joke because he looked like a small dog. I remember texting and calling Amanda, asking her what to do and all that. <laughs> it was really funny and sad. 
Like six months later, me and that boy had to part ways because of some bad and sad things, and Amanda was my rock for my first ever real heartbreak. Despite having some things she had to go through on her own. And no matter how much time passes, she's still like that. I applied to two really prestigious high schools in my area and I was just so torn on what was going to happen in my future. I just needed to know if I would even be accepted here and well yeah you know long story short yeah your girl got rejected to both. Um, I'm not good at math apparently enough. <laughs> yeah. Amanda and I unfortunately were on two different paths going to high school. But we both knew that we'd end up alright. I remember staying up late at night texting her towards the days, entering high school saying, you know what, we're gonna make it through. And I may or may not have carried Amanda's graduation photo uh, for good luck in my wallet. I became very involved in my high school and my high school was known to hold a lot of events where you could invite uh, people from outside. Since it was an all-girls school, you'd never see the a boy if you didn't get one invited. So I brought her to all of the events, the musicals that I was in, all of the talent shows, and all of my high school friends fell in love with her. And honestly, that made me the happiest I've ever been, seeing them connect to her in the way that I love. The summer of my sophomore year, I had fallen super head over heels in love with this boy who literally dressed like a greaser, like he was in the movie Grease. And the grease was also in his hair and he wore jeans to play basketball. I would be so nervous around this kid, I would just count on Amanda to save the day. Whenever I would feel nervous to be alone with him or to initiate conversation, Amanda would hit me with that good advice and sometimes <clears throat> that good hit on the shoulder. Amanda even wrote a psychology report on me once, observing how I acted around him. Um, she got a pretty good grade though, so she's just saying. She helped me with this guy for 10 months until he unfortunately just disappeared without a trace and he hasn't said a word to me since actually. The day I found out that he asked another girl to prom from some kid, I think I spent 30 minutes in a stairwell crying. From that point on, Amanda helped rebuild all of the confidence I had lost and tear down all of the burdens and negative things I had taken in. I began drowning myself in school and my responsibilities, and to be quite honest, I still feel like I lost a little bit of who I was to how sad I was letting myself be constantly. But Amanda and I, without fail, hand in hand, still remembered that time moves on from every difficult moment. We'd keep each other sane by sending each other inspirational quotes and even funny memes we both found on Twitter to each other. That's what kept us alive for a lot of the time. There were definitely moments where the both of us had our share of heartaches and rough times, and it would take its toll on our friendship. There was probably one week or at the most a few days where we didn't speak at all. And we both knew it was the best choice for each other. She always knew how to give me space when I needed it, and I knew when she needed her silence as well. But to this day, we still stay up until like 2 a.m. talking about how cool it would be to live in a nice apartment together and finally be able to relax and breathe in a space where you know you're with someone who truly is your best friend. When I turned 18, I had a traditional Filipino debut, and she was even the one to give the toast to me. More like a roast, but that was still very special. As more time and as more skinny boys had come and gone and more tears were shed, it came time for the both of us to graduate high school. We were both waiting for this day for four years. Four years of us crying over broken relationships and friendships, Four years of us clawing at the doors of our private all-girls schools, just waiting to get out. Waiting to see each other graduate. But actually, no, it didn't work out that way because both of our graduations actually fell on the same day. Uh, an unfortunate circumstance of us sharing everything together, we also shared the same graduation date. So we couldn't see each other graduate. But that doesn't mean I wasn't thinking about how proud I was of her the entire time. Amanda has gone through a lot. 
with her family, friends, school, relationships, and she's come out tougher than anyone. She's quite the inspiration and she doesn't even know it. There have been moments where we're both sitting in my car, blasting some Post Malone song and drinking some fatty drink from Starbucks, when I think to myself, this kind of friendship is so rare. 13 years of continuous love from someone, someone who writes reports on you and how uncomfortable you are with boys you like. I know that Amanda, and even I, get scared because of the distance now being put between us because of college. But as they always say, distance makes the heart grow fonder. We've had boys come and go and give up on us because of distance and committing and relationships faltering because of miscommunication and lack of effort. But no matter the distance, I know that none of that will be the case for me and my best friend Amanda. It's a personal goal of mine to have Amanda as my maid of honor at my wedding and to be the first one to hold my future annoying crying baby. But I don't know about that because she laughs when babies cry and like she always texts me in church like, oh, there's a baby crying and I'm laughing so hard. Like, I don't really trust her anymore. I don't know. Good friendships can withstand distance, but best friendships can withstand time. This has been a Draw My Friendship with my best friend of 13 years, Amanda. Thank you for everything, Amanda. From Nicole.